Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India learners welcome to the session of managerial economics i am dr supriya jain working as an assistant professor in the institute of business management at gla university mathura let us look at the topics we have covered in our previous session in the previous session we have talked about demand what demand is and we have seen that demand will be an effective uh, only when a person is having a desire willingness and ability to pay for it then after we have talked about different types of demand where we have discussed about direct and derived demand recurring and replacement demand competing and complementary goods demand and we have also talked about individual and market demand thereafter we have also talked about the determinants of demand what are the factors which affects the demand of the commodity and when uh, we have seen the various impact some of the determinants were having positive relationship on demand whereas some are having inverse relationship but the most prominent determinant which affect the demand of any commodity is the price and it is inversely proportionate to it thereafter we have talked about demand function where we have seen how we could have established the mathematical relationship between the demand and its determinant demand schedule is a tabular representation where we have seen how the change in the prices causes the change in the quantity demanded whereas demand curve is your graphical representation and demand curve will always be downward sloping uh, showing that there is an inverse relationship between the price and the demand and demand curve can be linear as well as non linear depending upon how much change has been taken place in the quantity demanded due to the change in the prices then we have talked about the movements on demand curve and these movements on demand curve takes place because of change in the price if the demand is increasing because of decrease in the price we call it as an expansion okay whereas whenever the demand decreases because of increase in the price the demand will decrease and we call it as an contraction phase and if you talk about shifts in demand curve shifts in demand curve take place because of change in the factors other than the price say if the income of the consumer is increasing or the taste and preference of the consumers are changing and because of that if the demand increases then there will be a shift okay and that shift will take towards right uh, rightward so that is been considered to be as an shift in demand curve and when there will be the you know uh, demand decreases the demand curve will shift towards left so these were the topic we have covered up in our previous session and now let us move out to the uh, further topics of this section we are going to cover so let us have a look on the learning objective what all we are going to learn from today's session here first of all we will understand about the concept of law of demand thereafter we will also look at the reasons how this law of demand exists and what kind of relationship is being shown here in law of demand thereafter we will talk about law of diminishing marginal utility and its relationship with law of demand we will also analyze the exceptions where the law of demand will not work then we will also talk about the supply as we know we have talked about demand and demand is also important for us same is the case of supply as yes, because they are both the two sides of a coin so here in this session we are also going to talk about what supply is what are the determinants of supply what is the law of supply how we will talk about supply schedule supply curve as well as shifts in supply curve so let's begin with the very first topic where we are going to talk about law of demand law of demand is basically Uh, the law which states that keeping other thing constant or you can also call it as an citrus paribus as you know that this is the assumption we make where we need to study the impact of only one variable over the dependent variable as we all know demand is been affected by various determinants right there can be income which can create a change in the demand uh, price of related goods can change advertisement effect can be there there are a lot of determinants which can affect the demand but here as in the law of demand we are only establishing the relationship between the price and demand and we are seeing that how much demand will be changed because of change in the price 
So, for that we need to assume the situation where we have assumed the other factors to be constant that means, we have assumed that there will be no change taking place in the income, in the taste and preference, in the price of related goods and so on. So, in uh, as per the Professor Sommelson, he defines law of demand states that people will buy at lower price and buys less at higher price. So, what that uh, does that mean that whenever the prices are low, people will demand more and whenever the prices are high, the demand will be less keeping other things same. And what are these other things? The determinants which can affect the demand. So, it is assumed that other determinants of demand are constant and it is only the price is the variable and the influencing factor. So, we are only studying the impact of price over the demand. So, law of demand says that price is the factor which affects the demand of the commodity x keeping the price of the x. And as because there is an inverse relationship whenever the price of the uh, commodity x will increase the demand for commodity x will decrease. So, this is how we basically write the function uh, you know demand function for law of demand that demand for commodity x is the function of price of commodity x right here we are only studying the impact of price. One thing which is very much important for all of you to understand here is law of demand is applicable only in the short run right. We cannot consider this law in a longer period of time as because we have assumed uh, the other factors to be constant. We have assumed that the income of the consumer is constant, their taste and preferences are constant, price of related goods are constant. So, we cannot assume them to be constant for the longer period of time. So, this law is applicable only in the short run. We, if we want to study the impact of price on the demand, we can assume these factors to be constant, but for a shorter period of time. So, the existence of this law is in the short run only, right. So, moving ahead, let us look at the characteristics of law of demand derived from uh, the definition which we have studied. What we are saying, the very first thing which is very important to understand is the inverse relationship. This we have already understood that price is inversely related to the demand. Whenever the price will increase, quantity demanded will decrease. So, there is an inverse relationship. Secondly, what we are saying here is price and independent variable and demand a dependent variable. Now, this is something very important for all of us to understand that here it is the impact of price we are studying on demand, not the effect of demand on price. Whenever there will be a change in price, then demand will be affected. So, we are considering price as an independent variable and demand as an dependent variable. Okay. So, this you have to understand where we are in, uh, studying the impact of price on the demand, not the uh, impact of demand on the price. Right. In law of demand, we study it this way. And lastly, we are saying that we have to assume this other factors uh, remain same or constant. Otherwise, we would not be able to make this study. This law of demand study is not possible if you are not assuming the other factors to be constant. So, this is how we understand the characteristics of law of demand. Now, let us look at the law of diminishing marginal utility. We will continue with law of demand after this uh, discussion of law of diminishing marginal utility because this law is again very important for all of us to understand and this law of diminishing marginal utility also relates with law of demand that we will discuss in our further classes. So, let us look at the law of diminishing marginal utility. What does this law says? As per the law of diminishing marginal utility, marginal utility for successive unit consume goes on decreasing. So, this basically uh, states that as and when we keep on consuming something, the marginal utility of those things keeps on decreasing. And the very simple example for understanding this law of diminishing marginal utility is if somebody is feeling hungry, right. So, the first chapati which he or she eats gives the maximum satisfaction to that person, right. But when the person takes the another chapati, then that satisfaction will not be the same the first chapati has given to that person. So, as and when the person keep on consuming the chapatis, the utility keeps on decreasing because 
all these chapatis are capable of satisfying the hunger of that person and there will be a point where that person is not going to have any more of it because the hunger of that person will be satisfied. So, this is how we define this law of diminishing marginal utility that as and when you keep on consuming any commodity, its marginal utility keeps on diminishing because your satisfaction which you are getting out of that commodity keeps on reducing. So, as you consume more and more unit of a commodity, total utility will go on increasing definitely the total utility will increase because you will sum it up whereas, but up to the certain point, but beyond which if you continue to consume any subsequent unit any further unit of that commodity, the total utility will also start decreasing and this is been called as law of diminishing marginal utility. So, let me give you a clear understanding of this law of diminishing marginal utility with this example. Let us suppose there is a person named Somil and this person is having a small a strong liking for sandwiches right. Now, we are going to calculate the total utility as well as the marginal utility and here in this first column we are uh, showing these units of consumption. So, when the person has not consumed any unit the total utility was 0 and there was no marginal utility, but as in when he started consuming the very first unit of this sandwich which he was liking very much the total utility derived out of this consumption was 20 and the marginal utility will always be same in the very first case right. Whereas, after the consumption of the second unit you can see the total utility increased from 20 to 36 but the marginal utility uh, reduces from 20 to 16. How are we calculating this marginal utility? Basically, this marginal utility is the change, right? Change after the consumption of one unit, one extra unit which you have consumed and after the consumption of that unit, what utility you have derived out of it? Utility is basically the satisfaction, okay? In economics, we call it as an utility. Utility means the satisfaction you are getting out of the consumption of that particular commodity. So, the difference between 36 and 20 is 16 and this is how we have calculated the marginal utility as and when the person keeps on consuming this commodity, right. So, here you can see up to the point this total utility was increasing up to this fifth unit of the consumption, whereas with the sixth unit of consumption total utility is also not increasing and thereafter it has started decreasing because this person is not able to have more of the units right, the uh, hunger of that person is satisfied right. Whereas, if you talk about the marginal utility it is decreasing since the beginning and there is a point where it reaches to 0 and if you are going to consume further then it might goes in negative right. So, Samul uh, till the Samul had not consumed any sandwich his satisfaction level was nil like I said and the total utility was 0. But the very first sandwich gave him the maximum satisfaction that is of 20 unit because he has a strong desire to have one. We can see that total utility is increasing with each successive sandwiches, but the marginal utility is declining. So, let us move with the further with this example as I have told you with the sixth sandwich that has given him the no additional satisfaction right up to the fifth unit which he has consumed the total utility was increasing, but with the consumption of total uh, you know 6 unit his total utility was also not increasing and the marginal utility for the 6 sandwich was 0. So, now this is the point where we need to understand that consuming further any unit will not give any kind of a utility to that person and the marginal utility will be 0. So, these are the graphs which basically help you to understand the total utility pattern as well as the marginal utility and we have drawn these graph on the basis of the figures we have used in this uh, column right. So, as you can see initially the total utility was 0 and then it increases up to the point and thereafter it started decreasing. So, this is how we represent this total utility curve starting from 0 initially it increases keeps on increasing and then at the point of time it, it, it goes downwards right. Whereas, marginal utility since marginal utility was nil uh, when the consumption was not taken up and then it keeps on decreasing right. So, since the beginning the marginal utility of a commodity keeps on decreasing up and up to a point it will reach to 0 and if you will still continue your consumption then marginal utility will go negative which does not give any kind of a satisfaction 
which will uh, which uh, person is not going to do right. So, this is how we understand this law of diminishing marginal utility that how much satisfaction are we going to get from the consumption of any commodity because whatever we are purchasing or whatever we are buying we need to make a sacrifice and that sacrifice we are actually making in terms of money right. So, we try to keep our satisfaction up to the point where we are getting the benefit out of it we are not going to pay for anything where we are not getting any benefit of it right. So, further continuing our discussion of law of diminishing marginal utility to understand this law uh, here also we have certain assumption like to understand the law of demand we have made the assumptions keeping other factors to be constant. In the same case when we are talking about law of diminishing marginal utility and to understand this law clearly we have to again make certain assumption. So, let us look at the very first assumption. The very first assumption say that the unit of consumption must be a standard one. Now, this is very important right the sandwich which we were talking about in the case of sawmill right that size of the sandwich should be standard one too large or too small size of any commodity will not hold this uh, law good ok. So, if we have given small bites of sandwiches to the sawmill then definitely his total utility or marginal utility would have not been declined right. So, the size or the standard uh, standard should uh, size of that commodity should be a standard size not very small not very large. Secondly, the consumption must be a continuous consumption again whatever the person is consuming like if he is having sandwiches that the consumption of sandwiches should be taken up on a continuous basis right. If the sawmill has taken one piece of sandwich in the morning and then one in the afternoon and then uh, last in the midnight then there would have been no change or there the utility would have not been declined right. So, it is again very important to hold this law uh, validate it is important to consume that commodity on a continuous basis then only the marginal utility of that commodity will diminish. Then the third point says that multiple unit of the commodity should be consumed yes it, this, uh, this law actually holds good in case of those goods which are of recurring nature right. This law is not uh, you know uh, this law does not works on the durable goods durable consumable goods like furniture. If you have purchased furniture today you are not going to purchase it again and again if you have purchased car today you are not going to buy it again and again right you cannot have a multiple unit of those things. But yes it holds true for those goods which are of recurring nature like e tables ok which you have consumed once and then you can demand more of those commodity. So, this is again important then next we have talked about the taste and preference. Taste and preference of the consumer should also remain unchanged during the consumption right. So, if you remember guys I have started my example with the saying that Somul has a strong liking to have sandwich right. So, this is something which you need to understand that in case of the consumption of any commodity suppose he also likes to have coffee. So, if you are after the third unit of the sandwich if you offer coffee to sawmill then his marginal utility again will not diminish it will it might increase right. So, the taste of preference of a person if a person is eating something and suddenly if a person changes the taste and start having something else then the marginal utility will not diminish ok. So, the point here to understand here is to hold this law true or to validate this law we need to understand whatever you are taking uh, for the consumption that taste and preference of a person should remain same during that point of time and good should be normal not addictive in nature that is also very important whatever the good person is consuming that uh, this law does not hold true on the items which are of addictive nature because in that case maybe their marginal utility will not decline it might go up maybe in the case of uh, you know tea or if a person is having a habit of smoking then uh, those kind of goods will uh, not hold true with the study of law of diminishing marginal utility. So, I hope this law of diminishing marginal utility is clear to every one of you where we are studying this law to understand how the consumption of any commodity uh, you know the diminishes the marginal utility of that commodity and we can only study this law with the help of these assumption. So, now let us move to the next heading where we are going to further talking about uh, where we are going to further talk about the law of demand right. So, going back to the law of demand now we are going to study 
how this law of demand works and what are the reasons behind this law of demand. So, here we have five points to discuss to understand how this law of demand is going to work. The very first point is the substitution effect. Now, how this substitution effect is going to work? Basically, these two points substitution effect and income effect are also called as price effect. Okay. So, how this substitution effect and income effect is going to uh, affect this law of demand? Let me tell you with an example substitution effect. Substitute goods are those goods which can be used in place of one other. Let us take an example of tea and coffee. Right. So, we are talking about the very first point substitution tea and coffee are the substitute of each other. Suppose the price of tea increases. Right. So, what will happen? The demand for coffee will increase because ultimately what we are saying when price of tea will increase the demand for tea will go down. With the same commodity when price of any commodity increases the demand for the same commodity will decrease, but the demand for the substitute commodity will increase keeping that into consideration that automatically the price of that commodity decreases. Right? Suppose the price of tea was 10 and the uh, price of coffee was also 10 right? per, uh, per cup. When the price of tea increases from 10 to 11 rupees, so demand for tea will decrease. This is for the same commodity, but when we see the impact on the substitute commodity, now the people those who were liking to drink tea. Now, because the price of tea increases, they shifted their demand towards coffee. Now, automatically the price of coffee reduces. It, it has not changed, but in comparison to uh, tea, the price of coffee is still 10 and price of tea is now 11 rupees. So, people will shift towards the substitute good. Okay, that is why we say when price of any commodity increases, the demand for that commodity decreases because people try to substitute that commodity people try to buy the substitute goods of those commodity and because of that demand of that specific commodity decreases. So, this is what has been no known as substitution effect. right? Then the next one is your income effect. Coming to the next point, we have this income effect. How does this income effect work? Now, you need to recall one thing again, there is no change in the income. right? Income is the same because we have already assumed other factors to be constant if you remember law of demand says that keeping other thing constant whenever the price increases demand decreases and vice versa. So, we need to be understood that thing that income is not increasing, but our purchasing power is uh, you know uh, affecting with the change in the price of any commodity. Suppose uh, the price of apple per kg is 50 rupees. right? and you are having 100 rupees with you. So, how much apple you can buy? You can buy 2 kgs apple because you are having 100 rupees with you and per kg apple costs 50 rupees. So, that means you can easily buy 2 kgs apple with this 100 rupees. And now let us assume that price of apple increases from 50 rupees to 100 rupees. Okay, suppose in anyhow the price of apple increases from 50 rupees to 100 rupees. So, the price has increased. The income of the person remains the same, still you are having 100 rupees, but now because of increase in the price of apple with the same income, you are now able to buy only 1 kgs of apple, right? Because your purchasing power reduces because of increase in the price of that commodity, right? So, I hope all of you are understanding this point, how I am going, to, uh, I, am to, uh, I am trying to tell you about the income effect. It creates the effect on your income. Right, where your purchasing power either increases or decreases. Suppose the price of apple reduces from 50 rupees to 25 rupees. Right? So, how much apple now you can buy with this 100 rupees? Now, you will be able to buy 4 kgs of apple with the same amount. Right? So, the price when increases, your purchasing power decreases because of which you are able to demand less of that commodity. Whereas, when price reduces, your purchasing power increases and with that you can buy more of that commodity. So, see how the uh, law of demand we are able to justify with this income effect. right? It is not the change in the income uh, which is taking place, it is the change in the purchasing power of a person taking place because of change in the price of a commodity. Now, next is law of diminishing marginal utility. This law we have already understood and that is the purpose where, where I have explain this law of diminishing marginal utility. 
Now we are going to understand how this law of diminishing marginal utility relates to the law of demand. Suppose we have, uh, app take, we, let us take the example of apple again. Here we have quantity of apples and here we have marginal utilities of apple which say we are talking about in passive, right. When we have one quantity of apple, the marginal utility which we are getting that is 100 paisa, okay. With the consumption of second quantity, uh, second unit of apple, uh, we are getting the marginal uh, utility say around of 80 paisa. With the consumption of third unit of apple, we are getting the marginal utility of around 60 paisa, right. So, as you can see as and when we are consuming the more and more units of apple, our marginal utility is declining, right. And that we have already understood why this marginal utility of a person declines when we consume more and more unit of that commodity. But now as you know that whatever we purchase, okay, whatever we buy from the market, we need to pay for it. Nothing comes for free, right. And being a rational person, we always analyze the cost and benefit, right. We are always ready to pay up to the point where, uh, you know, benefits are more than the cost, okay. But, and we can also buy up to the point where benefits are equals to the cost or where price is equals to the utility, right. But we will never try to pay beyond the point where utility is less and prices are more, okay. So, the point of, uh, you know, understanding here is a person would like to spend the income uh, on up to the point where the price is equals to the utility, but definitely a person would not like to spend their income on any of the commodity where the utility is less and the price is more. As we are saying that the marginal utility is keeps on decreasing. So, when apple is 100 paisa, uh, we will buy only one quantity. If the price of apple reduces to 80 paisa, we will buy two units of apple. And when the price of apple reduces to 60 paisa, we can buy three units of apple. So, you can see that when the price of commodity is decreasing, the person can demand more of that commodity because here they are comparing the price of that commodity with the utility they are driving out of it, right. People want to pay where utility is more than price, but they can also buy up to the point where price is equals to the utility, but not where utility is lesser than the price. So, this is how we establish the relationship of marginal utility with the law of demand. I hope all of you have understood this clearly. Going back to the reasons underlying law of demand, we have another point here which is called as new consumers, right. New consumers are also being added. Uh, to the commodity whenever the price reduces, right. Whenever the price reduces, the people who were not able to afford it earlier, now they also been added to the, uh, you know, consumption of that commodity. So, definitely the demand of that commodity will increase and maybe the earlier consumers who were demanding them now are capable of demanding it more. So, whenever the price reduces, new consumers also add to that. Uh, purchasing list of that commodity. So, definitely the demand of that commodity will increase. And then we have the last uh, reason here which is called as different uses of commodities. There are certain commodities which can be used for different purposes, right. So, different purposes uh, like electricity can be used for different purposes, like uh, steel can be used for different purposes, like wood can be used for the purpose, uh, different purposes. So, there are different commodities like milk can be used for different purposes, right. So, there are different commodities which can be used for different purposes, but what happens when the price of these commodities are higher side, then we try to use these commodities for a very specific purpose where they cannot be substitute. But yes, when the price of these commodities decreases, we try to use them as and when uh, we can use it or more and more we can use it, right. So, that is why the demand for those commodities increases. So, these are the reasons behind law of demand and uh, which, which holds law of demand true and able to establish the relationship that whenever the price of any commodity increases, its demand decreases and that happens because of the substitutions available in the market because of the change in the purchasing power of a person, because of law of diminishing marginal utility, where the person always compare the price with the utility they are driving out of it and as because the uh, utility keeps on diminishing, so a person will be able to demand more of that commodity only when the prices are lesser, right. 
new consumers also added to that group and lastly we have talked about the different uses of a commodity the items will be demanded more and more when the prices are less and that particular item can be used for different purposes but when the prices are high we try to use it for a very specific purpose where we cannot substitute it okay now let us move to the next topic where we are going to talk about the exceptions of law of demand now what are these exceptions law of demand says that whenever the price of any commodity increases its demand decreases but that is not uh, you know in every cases it is not possible that in each and every case the price of commodity increases and their demand decreases there are certain cases where this law of demand does not holds good so let us start with the very first point where we are going to talk about given goods now what are these given goods given goods are basically the special type of inferior goods and we also call it as a given paradox because these are the goods which are been studied by sir robert given and on his name only we are calling them as a given goods actually this was an study which was made in the ireland where the people are very poor and they were having two things only for the consumption one was the meat and the other was the bread right so for them meat was the superior good and the bread was the inferior good and as because they were having very limited income so they were consuming both of them and definitely they were not able to spend more of the meat because they were not having more income to spend on it because it was a superior good so they used to have more of bread to satisfy their hunger but what happened when the price of bread increases right when the price of bread increases as per the law of demand the demand for bread should have reduced but in this uh, paradox the consumption of bread was not reduced but in fact it was increased right because still the price of bread was comparatively lesser than the price of meat because there were only two commodities so they were comparing those two commodities one as an inferior and the other was an uh, superior good so when the price of this inferior good increases but still the increased price of the bread was lesser than the price of meat so therefore the people have not reduced its consumption but still they are having that consumption or even they were demanding it more right so these are the special categories of inferior goods and in case of given goods law of demand does not exist that means whenever the price of these goods increases their demand does not decreases now the second is your snob appeal or wabbling goods or we can also call them as in social status goods now these are the goods which are having a you know impact on the people for their for maintaining their society and that is why we are calling them as in snob appeal the goods which have snob appeal right which people wants to you know show for their status and why do we call them as in wabbling goods again these are the goods which are studied by wabbler so we call uh, them on his name so these are also been called as uh, wabbling good social status good like wearing diamond jewelry or having antique paintings in your house here in these cases people are not considering the law of demand because price of these commodities are very high and still people are demanding them because they want to show their social status right because they want to show how uh, you know uh, they are representing their status in the society so in such cases also law of demand will not work then we have demonstration effect now demonstration effect is again the effect where we are influenced by some person right where we are you know following some person because we consider that person as an idol and whatever that person is doing we are also uh, doing the same thing irrespective of the price and that is why you can see that the advertisements are usually been endorsed by the celebrities because we uh, you know uh, keep these celebrities as an our idol and we like to follow them we like to do whatever they are doing so whatever they are advertising whatever the product they are advertising we try to buy those things and we try to do all those things because of that uh because we because they are demonstrating it right so in such case, cases we are following that person we are following the words of those person rather than looking at the price of that commodity we are been influenced by them so there also law of demand will not work we like to do those things which they are asking us to do or whatever they are doing we try to do those things so here we are been influenced by the people therefore in demonstration effect also law of demand does not work 
then we have future expectation of prices yes future expectation of prices means what is your expectation with the price of that commodity law of demand is saying that when the price of a commodity is increasing that demand for that commodity will decrease so what happen in case if the price is already high of some commodity but the future expectation of that commodity is that that the prices are going to high further right or further there will be an increase in the price of that commodity suppose a case of an example of gold we can take right already the price of gold is high but still the people are expecting that further in future the prices will go up so they have increased their demand with keeping the expectation with the future prices even on the higher price they are demanding it more because they are expecting that the price will go further in future right so again with the future expectation of price if you are expecting that in future the prices will go further up you are still demanding that commodity on the higher price the next is the insignificant portion of income spent yes this is again important on the purchase of commodities where you are uh, you know spending very insignificant proportion of your income suppose you are earning very good right your salary is very good and if if the if the price of a candle increases right if the price of candle increases from 10 rupees maybe to 12 rupees or maybe to 13 rupees will you change the demand of your commodity for that product definitely not because the amount which you are spending on the purchase of that commodity is very insignificant as compared to your income right if there will be a change in the price of a matchbox right so what will you do will you reduce the demand of that commodity definitely no you will not reduce it right it will not going to impact much to you but obviously if you would have been spending the significant portion of your income suppose if you want to buy a refrigerator if you want to buy a television right and if there will be a change in the price of those commodity definitely your demand will get affected but for the goods where you are spending very insignificant portion of your income right and when the price of those commodities changes then the demand for such commodities will not get affected therefore in such cases also law of demand will not hold good next is goods with no substitute right so as uh, i think it is clear to every one of you when you have no choices left with you definitely the law of demand will not work price of petrol increases and you are having a petrol car you have no choice right you will have to demand it on a higher price only right because uh, suddenly you cannot change your car into a diesel car or maybe into a cng car or maybe an electric vehicle right it will take a considerable time but in short run law of demand will not hold true for those goods where you are not left with any substitute where there is no other alternative left to you you have to demand it even on the higher prices in case of emergencies yes in case of a sudden war right in case of some uh, you know medical situation right law of demand will not work if doctor is asking you to take certain medicine from certain uh, you know shops or maybe from the hospital and there, there is an emergency you don't have a time right so you are not left with any choices even on the higher price you have to demand right so in case of emergencies people are not considering this law of demand they just have to buy that product because it is a need of an hour so here people are not going to consider the price of that commodity so definitely the law of demand also not work in case of emergencies then we have consumer psychologies bias or illusion now what is this in certain cases consumer have a kind of an illusion or they have this kind of a psychology a uh, psychological belief where they say that whenever the price of a commodity reduces the quality also reduces so if you have that kind of a perception if you have that kind of a psychology in your mind where you believe when the price of any commodity reduces its quality also deteriorates right its quality also reduces and definitely you will buy those commodities which will be pricing more right so this psychological belief or illusion in the mind of the consumer will also uh, you know buy more of those commodities where the prices are more so here law of demand will not work items of addiction so items of addictions are those items which people want to have it irrespective of the price even if the prices goes up they will demand it and because of this reason government 
charges more of the taxes on these items right because they are of addictive nature even if the uh, government will add more prices to it in terms of taxes people will demand them people will buy them right so item of addictions are such items where again law of demand will not work then we have irrational behavior of the consumer sometimes consumers behave irrationally right they 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 go to the market and they buy things and they do impulse shopping right do not keep the consideration of price and the utility they just buy it so some of the consumers also behave irrationally and if they are behaving irrationally but uh, you know we have assumed this assumption in the very beginning and economics holds true on uh, on this belief that we all are rational people and whatever we are doing whatever we are uh, you know doing uh, as an customer or as an consumer as an producer we always behave rationally we always calculate the cost and benefit but there are cases where people are behaving irrationally they are buying uh, goods like that only or they are making impulse shopping right irrespective of their price and the utility which they are going to get out of it there also this law of demand will not work and lastly demand for necessary demand for necessary goods also uh, do not validate this law of demand because here people are going to demand those goods because they are necessary goods even if the price of those goods will increase like food items even if the price of those goods increases we have to demand them like medicines like food so these are the necessary things so here also in this case law of demand will not hold true so if you go back and revise these headings once again what all are the things which are not been considered in the law of demand or where the law of demand does not holds good the very first cases of the given goods given goods are the special categories of inferior goods and in this case whenever the price will increase demand for these goods will not decrease snob appeal goods are your social status goods which you are buying to show your uh, status in the society then we have demonstration effect here you are been influenced by some person and you try to follow that person you try to do those things but that person is doing you are associating yourself with that uh, person and you buy things uh, irrespective of the prices right future expectation of the price if you are expecting the price of any commodity will rise in the future even at the present price is already high but you are expecting that the price will further go up so you demand more of that commodity at present insignificant proportion of income spent the items on which you are spending very insignificant proportion of your income which which is not going to impact you much so demand for those commodities will not affect it right even if their price increases you might be demanding the same quantity or you might can demand more of that goods without substitute where you are not left with any choices again the law of demand will not work in case of emergencies law of demand will not work consumer have a psychology where they are associating the price with the quality of the commodity so here the consumers will buy those products which are of higher prices rather than buying those goods which are lesser in price in case of items of addiction people are addicted to certain goods they would like to do the or, or to buy those goods because they are addictive items so here also price will not play a role for the demand of any commodity irrational behavior of a consumer if a people a person is behaving irrationally not considering the utility which the person is going to get out of that commodity the price which they are paying for it so in that case also law of demand will not work and demand for necessary goods right the, the items which are of necessities they are also we cannot go with the prices because they are necessary items now let us move to the next part of our uh, you know topic where we are going to talk about supply enough of discussion has already been made for the demand we have discussed everything of demand but now the important aspect is to understand supply because again without the study of supply we won't be able to find out the relative importance of demand as we can say they both are the two sides of a coin so two uh, blades of a scissor which goes together right just like demand indicate the willingness of a purchaser to buy particular commodity supply means the willingness of a firm to sell a particular commodity if you guys remember for the accomplishment of demand we have discussed that a person should have a desire to buy for it right and having a willingness and an ability to pay for it and that is from the consumer side because demand is always takes place from the consumer side whereas supply takes place from the producer side 
So, supply will be there when a person is having a willingness and an ability to supply that commodity then only supply will be possible. So, we can say that supply refers to the quantity of goods and services that a seller is willing to and able to provide at a price at a given point of time citrus paribus keeping other thing constant when a supplier is ready to supply and is able to supply go particular goods and services at a provided price as well as a point of time then it would be considered to be as in supply right now moving ahead first we will talk about equilibrium right equilibrium is what is a state of balance so here in the equilibrium we need to understand when the market will be in equilibrium right so for that demand and supply plays a very important role and the point where demand is equals to the supply that particular point would be considered to be as an equilibrium point so equilibrium is a situation in uh, which, uh, which there is no tendency for change right so it is that situation where there is no tendency of change things are at equal uh, pace a market will be in equilibrium where there is no reason for the market price of the product to rise or fall right why why there is a change in the price because of change in the demand and supply we all know right these are the two important forces of the market demand and supply and because of this only the price get affected when demand is more supply is less then price will increase when demand is less supply is more price will decrease so when they both are equal then price will remain same there will be no change taking place in the price so this occurs at the uh, this occurs at the price where quantity demanded is equals to the quantity supplied when quantity demand is is equals to the quantity supplied that is the point which we are referring to as an equilibrium position in the market and there will be no need of change in the price required so at this price the amount that consumer wishes to buy is the same as the amount that the producers wishes to sell so the price will be what the consumer is ready to buy and on the price at which the seller is ready to sell now you can look at this uh, this particular uh, table where you can understand this equilibrium position here we have three columns one is representing the quantity demanded the middle one represents the price and the third column we are uh, having the quantity supplied right as you can see whenever the price is increasing the demand is decreasing because there is always an inverse relationship right consumer will always want to demand lesser on the higher price whereas because supply is from the producer side and they want to supply more and more uh, when the prices are high because that will give them the benefit so here you can see when the prices are more they are supplying more and when the prices are less they try to supply less so here uh, the equilibrium occurs at price 3 now this is the price where the equilibrium occurs because here the consumer is also willing to buy 8 a uh, unit of that commodity and the supplier is also willing to sell eight a uh, unit of that commodity and this is the point where we are in equilibrium phase because here the supply and demand is equal consumer is ready to pay for this much of price and supplier is also ready to sell at this price so this is how we understand the situation of equilibrium in the market right and this is how we represent this curve demand curve is a downward sloping curve which represented with the red color and supply curve is a upward sloping curve which we are representing here in a purple color and this is the state of equilibrium where the demand is equals to the supply and the price and quantity demanded will remain same right so if there will be any change taking place in this demand and supply only then there will be a change in the price and quantity demanded will take place right so it is very important for us to understand when a market will be in equilibrium phase and this equilibrium phase is basically the ideal condition which never happens because uh, we cannot work in this equilibrium phase right these are the two forces which work but definitely uh, we are not at equilibrium phase always there is a difference in the demand and supply but for the understanding of the subject it is very important for all of us to know what is meant by the market equilibrium a market will be in an equilibrium stage when quantity demand is is exactly equal to the quantity supplied now moving further let us look at the determinants of supply like we have talked about the determinants of demand we do have the determinants of supply 
and the very first is your price of commodity. So, if the price of commodity X will change, what will be the impact on quantity supplied of commodity X? Like I said, there is a positive relationship because here we are talking from the producer side and producer will get more benefit when the prices are more, right? The producer wants to supply more on the higher prices. So, price here is having a positive relationship with the quantity supplied in uh, supply case. Whereas, in demand case, price is inversely related to the demand because consumer would like to buy more on the lesser price and lesser on the higher price. So, here price of a commodity is having a positive relationship. Now, next is the cost of production. So, for supply, cost of productions matter a lot, right? Cost of production includes the cost of land, labor, capital, all the resources which we are using for the production. So, if the cost of production is higher, right, then definitely the supply will be lesser because the producer will be able to produce less because cost of production is high. But if the cost of production is less, the producer will be able to produce more and supply more, right. So, in case of cost of production, it is inversely, uh, you know, proportion, uh, proportion uh, related, cost of production is inversely related with the supply, lesser cost, higher supply, higher cost, lesser supply. Then state of technology. Yes, the better the state of technology, the advanced technology which you will be using, definitely there will be more supply. So, better will be the technology, more will be the supply, poor or lesser technology you are using, then lesser will be the supply. So, again in the case of state of technology, there is a positive relationship, right? Number of firms, more firms, more supply, lesser firm, lesser supply. So, again there is a positive relationship. Then we have government policies as well. Government policies also impact supplies a lot. As you all know, government plays a very important role. They also provide subsidies and they also charges the taxes. So, in case of the commodities where the subsidies are being given, uh, we can supply, the producer can supply more of that commodity. And when the heavy taxes are being charged from the producer, then in those cases, the supplier will be, uh, the supply will be lesser, right? So, these are some of the determinants I have written here for the discussion and how you will be able to understand the impact of quantity supplied because of change in the determinants of supply and again the most prominent factor is the price of the commodity. As in the case of demand, we have price of the commodity, how it has affected the demand of that commodity. Same in the case of a supply, price of that commodity will have a major impact and here it is having a positive relationship. Now, let us move to the next point where we are going to understand the supply function. Now, what is the supply function? Supply function is again a mathematical relationship between the supply and its determinants. Okay. So, when we express mathematically the relationship between the supply, supply being a dependent variable and all the other determinants which we have talked about are the independent variable because it is the impact of these determinants we are studying on supply, right? So, the supply of a product X is the function of supply of commodity X is the function of price of the commodity X, cost of production, technology, government policies, number of firm. So, this is how we represent the supply function, the way we have represented the demand function, right? The more and more determinants we are going to study, uh, this is how we explain it, right? So, it is a kind of a mathematical expression we are representing here in the form of supply function. Moving ahead, we have law of supply. Just now we have studied about law of demand and law of demand state that keeping other factors constant, whenever we see that price increases, demand decreases. Now the opposite we are going to study in the supply. Again here we need to make the assumption that keeping other factors to be constant, that is citrus parables. Whenever the price of a commodity increases, supply also increases, the quantity supplied will increase. So, the law of supply states that other things remaining the same, that means we have assumed the other determinants to be constant. The higher the price of the commodity, the greater is the quantity supplied because that will benefit the supplier, right? And this is how we state this law of supply function here because we are only studying the price 
of that commodity. So, supply is basically the function of price of the commodity X, right? Price of the commodity X is the only function which is affecting the supply of the commodity X and the logic is easy to understand because price of the commodity is the revenue to the supplier. Why the supplier wants to supply more on the higher price? Because price is going to give the revenue to the firm. Therefore, higher price means the greater revenue uh, to the supplier. Hence, greater is the incentive to the supplier. For that reason, they want to supply more and more on the higher prices. Moving ahead, we have this is uh, supply schedule. Supply schedule is again just a tabular representation of law of supply what we have seen. Here these are the points which we are going to draw on the supply curve and then you can see these are the prices given and this is the supply uh, for per cup per month, right. So when the price was rupees 15, the supply was 10, uh, you know, uh, 10,000 because we are studying it in thousands per cup per month, right. And as in when the prices are increasing, supply is also increasing, keeping into consideration that supplier wants to supply more on the higher prices. Uh, looking at the supply curve, right, this is again a graphical representation of what we have seen in the uh, supply schedule. This is how we represent the supply curve. This is the graphical representation of the supply schedule and it represents the quantity supplied of a commodity at different price level, right. You can see that the supply curve is always upward sloping indicating that there is a positive relationship between the price and the quantity supplied. Here on the x axis we are uh, talking about quantity supplied because this is a dependent variable and on the y axis we always consider price of that commodity, right. So when the price was rupees 10. Uh, 15 around then the supply was 10, price increases to 30, supply also increases to the 30. So, this is how we represent the supply curve. Again, supply curve can be linear or it can be non-linear depending upon the effect changes placed in the quantity supplied due to the change in the prices. Moving ahead, we have shifts in supply curve and like I said and discuss the shifts and movements in the demand curve. So, as we have shifts in demand curve, shift means the supply curve will shift towards right or shift towards left again, right. So, here shifts in supply curve will take place because of change in the factors other than the price. If there is any change in the determinant taking, uh, you know, any change in the determinant taking place of supply other than the price, then the supply curve will shift either right or left. So, here I can uh, show this curve how the shifts in supply curve takes place. This is how we represent the supply curve which is upward sloping. Supply curve will shift towards right, downward shift will take place when the supply increases, right. So, here we have three things written here input price, technology and number of seller. As we see that input price is inversely related to the supply. So, when input prices are lesser, supply will be more. So, supply curve shift towards right. When technology is better, supply will be more. So, supply curve will shift towards right. When number of sellers are more, then supply will be more. Supply will shift towards right. So, these are the factors which causes a shift to the supply. Whereas, if you look at the uh, left side, we have the supply curve where we are representing the, uh, you know, quantity supply reduces because of the uh, change in the input prices. If the input price increases, supply will decrease. When the technology uh, states decreases, supply will decrease and when the number of seller decreases, supply will decrease and the supply curve will shift towards back, right? That is towards the left side and the shifts will take place, okay? So, uh, one thing which you need to understand here is shifts in supply curve are taking place because of change in the factors other than price and movements takes place because of change in the price, right? So, this is what uh, we have discussed today and if we revise our topic for today, these are the headings which we have covered in our today's session where we have talked about law of demand, right, which states that keeping other factors to be constant whenever the price of any commodity increases, the demand for that commodity decreases and vice versa, right. Thereafter, we have talked about the law of diminishing marginal utility, which states that as in when we keep on consuming any commodity its marginal utility keeps on decreasing, right? So, marginal utility, law of diminishing marginal utility holds true 
on the basis of certain assumptions, those assumptions we have discussed, right? Uh, then only we would be able to study this law of diminishing marginal utility. What are the reasons behind law of demand? Why this law of demand holds true and why uh, when price increases, demand decreases, that happens because of the substitution effect, because of the substitute availability in the market, because of the income effect, where income does not changes, but yes, the purchasing power get affected because of law of diminishing marginal utility, right, where people would like to make a purchase up to the point where utility is more than price or utility is equals to the price, right or uh, new consumers also been added to that group and uh, law of demand holds true because of uh, new consumer or the different uses of the commodity. Some commodities are used for different purposes, so they are being demanded for that. Then thereafter we have talked about exceptions to law of demand, we have discussed the situation and the cases where law of demand does not exist, exist right, where the price of commodity increases even if their demand does not decreases. So, those were the exceptions to law of demand. Then we have talked about supply, where we have seen that supply increases whenever there is an increase in the price. What is the equilibrium situation in the economy? It, uh, it occurs when quantity demand is, is equal to the quantity supplied. Then what are the determinants of supply we have discussed? Law of supply, like, like it states that keeping other thing constant, when price increases, quantity supplied also increases. And lastly, we have talked about supply functions, schedule, curve and how shift in supply curve takes place. So, this is all for this session and here uh, these are the books written from the references are being taken up. Thank you all of you.